Good morning, folks. The sun let loose some more filaments over the last day. We're awaiting the first potential serious geomagnetic storms of the year, and we've got some cool space news to cover as well. Let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com, and we're finding the last 24 hours on our star were relatively calm near the equator, but there is definitely motion on the north, so let's go get a better look. Near the center longitudes, a surge pushes northward, followed immediately by the lift and release of a plasma filament cresting onto the Earth-facing disk. We'll watch those one more time in 304 angstrom so you can see the scope of the plasma filament as it releases, and also see how it leaves north and away and will not be a geo-effective impact. Despite these releases, we've got sunspot stories as well, but it's not in the big groups which are basically alpha polarity with some opposite magnetism plagues around the surface. It is a new, smaller group trailing the northern system that has beta polarity and a longitudinal spread which we've seen make flares before. Not that we really need any more on the space weather front as solar wind remains intensified into its third day, and while we should expect an imminent easing to this stream, the consecutive impact scenario is likely to occur today when the stream shockwave and faster particle flows arrive from this coronal hole. It is expected to engulf our planet within 24 hours. We will almost certainly still be reverberating when it arrives, and that means we could see major solar storms at a level above what took out power and internet across major U.S. cities and the world a few days ago. Okay, you want to see some cool stuff from space? Seven years of heliospheric observations with Ibex have already changed our understanding of the heliosphere, and now we look back over the majority of a sunspot cycle to see how things change based on solar activity. The sun and our solar system is basically heading through the U of the colored intensity ribbon, which is produced by our motion into and against the galactic fields and interstellar plasma. When comparing solar minimum conditions to solar maximum, we see that ENA intrusion fades like cosmic rays as the sun gets active, and they also say part of the resurgence during solar minimum is particle turnaround in the solar wind. Moving on, there are some awesome new images of a transitional disk in a star 320 light years from Earth, where a massive planet and protoplanet are orbiting and forming and causing emissions from the host every 4.6 years which create a phenomenal visual display of material around the star that they actually say is a spiral. Always love finding spirals in space. Lastly, on the news front, we are nine months past a call for submission of papers on electric currents in the solar system. They've extended the deadline due to lack of submission, and that is something we hope changes in a big way. If your jaw isn't on the floor right now, here's some perspective. Three major scientists are asking if anyone besides them sees evidence of electric universe, and the AGU is letting them do it in their house. This is the single most important opportunity the electric universe theorists have ever had, and I really hope the cosmological writers in this realm don't let it slip through their fingers. You're going to see storm concerns in the southeast U.S. and southeastern Australia. We've got some null school maps and shots of our star to close. Eyes on the solar wind. Impact imminent. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.